we're trying to get some chum. Simon just threw the net. <laughs> what do you got in the net? Can you snook? One, two, three, four. I think one of the spots. One's, one's like a 27, I think. Lord of lies, you cannot harvest snook. I pass now. Nope. Oh, hooking line only. Hey, this is Simon's on. Six. Oh, he just shook it. Stacked. There's the money shot there. Right there's a the money shot. That current ripping. Oh. Oh! He's on. Oh, oh you just came up and on him. Oh, Simon's on. Every sign. Nope, you're good. Is he flying through the. Oh! Decent. Oh! Well, you got him. Alright, just cast it out the looter lure. And it worked. First cast. Let me see it, Simon. Let's see how it de hooks. Oh, yeah. Boy, pick. Is he? Get the sun on it. Just run on it. Catch him on the looter lure, Simon. Way back. Ooh. Yeah, that's awesome. Here in this clip, you can see we really got into a good bite. The uh, jumbo mackerel we're biting, and we're throwing big spoons here, and they're really crushing the big spoons. Um, pretty much, you cast it out, you put your rod tip in the water, and you crank that as fast as you can, and that really stimulates them to chase it and bite. Um, and when you when you use those bigger spoons, it kind of weeds out a lot of those smaller fish. Um, they're kind of too big for those smaller fish to really eat and they're moving too fast for those smaller fish to catch. So those bigger fish have a greater chance to catch up to it and eat it before a smaller fish, a blue fish or a jack. And that's really one of our techniques for catching these big fish like this. And as you can see, we really have them flying in the boat. I'm hooked up, Simon's hooked up, Ryan's hooked up. It's like a constant flow. And this day we had a good 500 pounds of what we call jumbo fish, which are three pounds and up, and we had a couple at eight pounds. So it's it's a good technique when you can isolate a school of big fish. And there you go.
at the fish house. It looks like I got a lot of work to do. I got this guy topped off. And this guy topped off. Right here on A1A in Jupiter. Check them out, fishing headquarters. All your fishing needs from inshore to offshore to the Bahamas, they have it all. All right, I'm here at fishing headquarters with Tommy. Hey Matt, how you doing how you buddy? Doing? Good. And we're gonna talk about mackerel fishing today. What you need to catch mackerel. You've seen how I do it, but Tommy here can get you on what you need to actually catch these fish the right way recreationally. Sure. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things you can use to, to catch the mackerel around here. Mm -hmm. And if you want, Matt, we can go around and just show them a, a few things. Um, I'll show you a rod and a reel that's a good way to start out with. And then we'll show you the different tackle that you can awesome. use. Sounds All good. Right. Let's go over here to the rods. So, Matt, this is something that um, works well with the Spanish mackerel. We got a um, seven foot rod medium action um, we got we got 15 pound braid on here and the reason we use braid <coughs> is that some of the lures for Spanish mackerel are light we use a, a, a Clark spoon which has no weight very little weight so by having the the light braid on there it helps you cast that out there a little further okay we'll go over here and show you uh, some of the lures so you'll understand what I'm talking about so we don't this. want mono no um, the mono you just you can't cast it as as far and it twists and you do get a lot of line twist um, it's just it's just a better product all around by using that braid yep. for the Spanish yep. map this is so this is one of the um, this is one of the spoons they use and and this green reflective tape seems to work better than just the plain uh, mm. silver um, they both work and and when, when those fish are biting, I don't think that the color of the tape matters. But when they're, you know, when everyone's out there fishing, most all the guys have the green yeah. spoon. And now they'll go from this smaller size up to as large as one of these yeah. king spoons. Because you gotta remember, uh, those Spanish mackerel, you're catching some mackerel that, that are six to eight pounds. Yeah. Um, and they consider those jumbos. And they'll eat this without yeah. a problem. The, the gotchas work really well. Really good. Um, off of the piers, um, from from the beach sometimes. You know, if you're not in a boat, you can't really get out there. The weight on these things help you cast it out. I like using the one with the feather in the back because it's a single hook and you don't have treble hooks. You know, some of these have, you know, trebles in the back. Yeah. And you know what it's like to try to unhook a End mackerel with, with, with um, two sets of trebles in its face. Mm -hmm. You know, it's tough, so the single hook definitely works a little better. I like it that way. Yes, but sometimes there's times when they don't want the spoons. Absolutely. And so, that's when they'll probably want these. So that's when you go to the, what they call a flash minnow. Flash minnow, glass minnow, Gulfstream makes one of these. And this is all lead. It's all lead. So even when the mackerel chew off the hair, yeah. which yeah. they do, because they got sharp teeth, uh, the lead, you still have the color of the lead. You can throw that piece of lead out there and crank it and they're still gonna eat this. There's a lot of days where we can't catch them on the spoons and the recreational guys are, are, are catching crushing them on them stuff on like this. They're crushing them. Um, you know, and don't ever forget, if you're going out there, live shrimp work great too. Okay, most people don't think yep. about that, but a mackerel's gonna eat that live shrimp just as Absolutely. quick as it's gonna eat anything. They love those. So, um, you know, I've had guys go, well, I always take a dozen live shrimp with me just in case they're not biting. Definitely. I, I know I can come home with dinner. Yeah. Those are oh, massive. Like that. They are big, big shrimp. Those are what you want if you're gonna fish shrimp for mackerel. Really nice shrimp. If they want to uh, use the live shrimp, which hooks do you recommend? Sure. Um, you know, with those, I like to use a longer shank just for the reason of the cutting off. It's a, a 1 0 or a 2 0, depending on the, you know, the size of the shrimp. The longer shank hook, as you can see here, 
just keeps you from uh, getting cut off as, as you know as fast. You hook the sh you hook the mackerel a lot quicker in the corner of the mouth. You don't get cut off. And a lot of times with this longer shank, you don't even need to put wire on there. Just mm -hmm. some mono, some heavier mono, yeah. thirty pound. Uh, 30 pound to 50 pound and I know you guys use in the commercial guys they usually use uh, some that are a little heavier because you get more yeah. bites with mono than you will with wire. You, you use when we throw the big spoons we're always using 80 pound right because it doesn't cut our hands and we get less cutoffs and I prefer fluorocarbon actually because it's harder and you get more you get bites more, you get more, bites you get more you get, fish before, before you get broke spraying, off. Before it starts spraying, <laughs> through. And this, this is a um, this is a, a, a soft, tieable nice. wire, okay? And it's very flexible, just like mono. See how that is? I mean, you can tie oh, yeah. a regular fisherman's oh, yeah. knot in there, and you don't get cut off with the mackerel. Nice. Um, a lot of guys use this more with the fly fishing guys because uh, it is small, um, but mackerel aren't going to cut through that. And it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, kind of really loose, just like mono, you know? You, you don't lose the action of whatever lure you're throwing. A box of glass minnows. There you go. Okay, a five-pound box of glass minnows. You throw them in a bucket on your way out. They start throwing, start thawing out. When you get out there, you just grab a handful, and you scatter the handful, and then you just let them sink. There's when you'll take your spoon, you'll throw it out past that, let it sink. Just let that little, even though it doesn't weigh anything, it'll start to sink, especially with braid. Once it gets down, you want to put your rod tip in the water, and you want to <laughs> crank it as fast as you can. All right, so. Tommy just showed you what you need in order to catch Spanish mackerel like a pro. Stop on by here at Fishing Headquarters, right on A1A and Jupiter, and they will hook you up. See you later, Tommy. See you, Matt.